Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are investigating a basic yet crucial and fundamental concept in statistics and econometrics, that is, how to build correlation and covariance matrices for your data. And most often, I suspect you would have used the data analysis tab to generate such matrices. But today, alongside this trick, I'll show you two other ways of doing that that could be faster, more flexible, and most importantly, more intuitive and understandable. And as our toy data, we have got some microeconomic aggregates, such as gross capital formation, foreign direct investment to GDP, inflation, government spending across 131 countries that you might want to analyze using a covariance matrix or a correlation matrix before you, for example, run a regression so that you know whether there is multicollinearity, do some diagnostic testing, or get some idea of how these variables are related to each other after all. So, first of all, if we do it the old way, the data analysis way, we would have gone to data, data analysis tab, and to post a covariance matrix, you would have selected covariance from the list, and you click OK, and then you select the data that you want to estimate the covariance matrix for. So here we take this particular four columns, including the labels, so our matrix is nicely titled according to the variables that we're using. We specify that it's grouped by columns, so we've got variables in columns and not in rows. That is also supported by the template. And then we also specify where do we want our covariance matrix to be posted. So here we can simply click on the cell we want it to appear in. Uh, we want it to appear from cell A139 here. So if we press OK, the covariance matrix would be immediately posted. It's filled with numbers, uh, except the diagonal that's filled with the variance formula. It also uh, has its uh, upper right corner empty. So if you want to do some matrix multiplication with it, for example, you would have to manually copy the elements to make the matrix symmetric. Uh, however, it is fast and it tells you what the covariance between those variables is. Alternatively, for correlation, you still go data analysis, but now we select correlation here, and then we, in the similar fashion, select the input range. Let me show you how it's done right here. We're still specifying that the data is grouped by columns, and we've got labels in the first row. And then finally, just as with the covariance matrix in the data analysis tab, we can click on the cell we want the matrix to appear from. So here we've got cell A145 over here. So we press OK, and we've got the correlation matrix popping up as well. And we see that the variables are correlated with themselves with a correlation coefficient of 1. Unsurprisingly, that's by definition. And we've got pairwise correlations over here. So here we see that the most significant correlation coefficient we've got is minus 0.32 for inflation and government spending. Countries that spend uh, a lot in terms of their budget in proportion to GDP have lower inflation. And that could be uh, explain a number of different ways, but that's not why we're here. We want to build a flexible way of doing that, simply because if now you change the data around, this matrix would remain in values. And also, how do you build a matrix so that you don't have to fill the top right part uh, manually with values? So to do that, the first way would be to use the index function and populate the pairwise covariance matrix and correlation matrix that way. So let me show you. First of all, we need to apply the covariance.s function that calculates the covariance between two arrays. And then we have got the indices, the labeling of our variables over here, both for columns and for rows. And that's quite crucial, as that would allow us to pick one of the four variables to then covariate it with another variable as per the indices. So first of all, we input the index function and select the very first row of our area of data. And here we need to lock it both in terms of rows and columns and specify the index that we want to refer to. And here let's refer to this first index over here, locking the row. 
Well, can the row here, not the column, because as we drag it down, we want it to remain uh, referring to this particular row with one as our index. And as we drag it across, we want it to change the cell references so that it refers to other variables. And then we can close this particular index function and then specify the end of our first array that goes into the covariance matrix. So we input the uh, colon and then we input index. And now we have to input the very last row of our data array over here. Again, locking it both row and column wise. And as an index, we still refer to the same cell B151 here, locking the row. And that specifies our first array, our first variable that we covariate with some other variable. And another variable that we input here would be indexed by the variable in this particular range of cells. So accounting for that and being a little bit efficient and lazy, we can copy this particular formula over here closing the brackets for the covariance function and changing this particular cell reference to this, A152. And here we need to lock the column and not the row as we want the cell reference to change as we drag it down, but not as we drag it across. And similarly, we post exactly the same cell reference over here. And that would give us first the covariance of gross capital formation with itself. So basically, it will give us the sample variance of gross capital formation in this particular cell. And we see that we get a result that is very close to the one that is obtained from the data analysis tab. However, it's slightly different. The reason why that is different, I'll discuss as soon as we fill in the whole covariance matrix. So the index formula allows us to flexibly calculate the covariances between any pairwise elements, and it fills the whole um, matrix quite flexibly. So now if we change uh, some observations in our array, this would recalculate immediately. And also it automatically populates the whole matrix. So if you then want to do some uh, matrix operation with it, you don't have to worry about based on the data manually. However, why are those values and uh, all values actually over here as well, different to some extent, different slightly, not uh, by much, but always a little bit higher in magnitude than their counterparts from the data analysis matrix. If you look closely, you'll be able to spot that. Well, this is because the covariance matrix in the data analysis tab calculates the population covariance estimate and not the sample covariance estimate. So here, to make it consistent with the data analysis tab, we could have done covariance.p, and then it would make the results exactly the same as in the data analysis output. However, in statistics and econometrics, the convention is that a sample estimates of covariance and variance are preferred, so we stick with the ones we've got before. And now, for correlation, the idea would be very similar, apart from the fact that we need to input the corel, the correlation function in Excel, instead of the covariance.s function. Good news is that the correlation coefficient does not depend on whether you estimate covariance and variances as sample estimates or as population estimates, as long as you keep it consistent. So if we copy this formula and paste it over here to the first cell of our correlation matrix with indices and drag those cell references down to remain consistent with our indexing for the correlation matrix and change this function from covariance as to corel, we get one. And that's a good sanity check as gross capital formation with itself should produce a correlation coefficient of one by definition. And now we can populate the whole matrix and get exactly the same results as in the data analysis tab, simply because population and sample uh, estimates do not affect the calculations of correlation. Finally, the more intuitive and uh, uh, the way that helps you understand what a covariance matrix or a correlation matrix are is the one that uses matrix multiplication. To do that, we need first to calculate the means and standard deviations of our variables. And that's quite simple. For means, we can just calculate sample averages using the average function. And for the standard deviations, we can calculate the sample standard deviation to remain consistent with our index estimation. And then we can drag that across for all four of our variables. And now for adjusting it uh, to our sample size, we can calculate the observation count using the count function and applying it to any of our variables. So let's do the first one. 
and we see that we've got 131 countries. That's what we already mentioned at the start of the video. For the covariance matrix, we need to calculate demeaned data, meaning that we have to subtract the average from every single observation for the respective variable. And that is easy to do. We can refer to each and every observation and subtract the averages we have just calculated with rows locked and columns not locked, as we want the average to be variable specific, but we want to subtract the same average for different observations for the same variable. And having calculated d mean data, here we can just drag it across for all four variables and down. A nice sanity check whether you've done everything correctly in terms of d mean data is that you should have a sum and an average of zero across all four and the sum of them. And now the covariance matrix is actually just a matrix multiplication result of these demeaned variables matrices. To do that, we need to select the 4x4 array for our covariance matrix template and use the mmult function, matrix multiplication. And first, we need to input the transposed matrix of demeaned variables that is specified over here. And we need to multiply it onto itself, but in a non-transposed form. So we can copy this cell reference and paste it here. And that will produce the initial estimation for our covariances. And now we have to adjust it to sample size. And given the fact we've got sample covariances over here, we have to divide that all by sample size minus one. So here we've got our observation count, which is our sample size. So we subtract one and divide our matrix multiplication result by that. And then we can enforce this formula using shift control enter as that's a matrix multiplication formula and get exactly the same result as we've done over here using the covariance.s and the index formula, meaning that those two are mathematically equivalent. And for the correlation matrix, finally, we have to use normalized data as our input. Normalized meaning that we have to divide the d-mean data by the respective standard deviations, basically calculating sort of z stats, if you will. So here we divide our demeaned data over here by variable specific standard deviations. So here we have got them calculated over here and we refer to those standard deviations and lock just the rows. And here are our normalized variables. So basically Z stats. We enforce them throughout the whole sample and we can calculate our new correlation matrix based on matrix multiplication using exactly the same logic. Matrix multiplication of the transposed matrix of normalized variables that can be referred to over here. And on the right, we multiply it onto a non-transposed variant of the same matrix, and we divide by the sample size minus one. Here we have to keep it consistent with our standard deviation measure. As our standard deviation measure is a sample measure, we have to adjust by n minus one and not by n. If we had a population standard deviation estimate, we would have divided by n. And finally, we enforce this function using shift control enter. And we can see that we've got a correlation matrix equivalent to the one we've got for the indices, as well as the one we've got from the data analysis tab. And that are the three ways you can use to calculate a correlation matrix or covariance matrix in Excel. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make this any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.